Chris BBI here. I want to stop and say thanks. Thanks for tuning in and checking out whatever the video is about that's about ready to come up next. If you could take a minute and hit subscribe, I'd greatly appreciate it. And if you enjoy what you've seen here, make sure to hit the like button. We'd greatly appreciate your support. Anyhow, guys, all that aside, let's get on with the show. Well, good morning, boys and girls, and all the ships at sea. It's about time I've been able to get around to this thing. I've had this uh, this one project sitting here now for almost a year. I don't remember where we picked it up, but I remember all the stuff I had to do to it to make it work. Uh, okay, so we're on. We're going to start on a bottom. As I sit here and I talk to you guys, we're going to run it through all the different bands. So let me zoom out here. We're on 160 meters right now at the moment. Let's zoom on down here. What we've got is in a really, really good shape. Dentron ML2500. And what it's got in it for final tubes are the very rare uh, iMac 8875s. Okay. And they look like a um, 4CX250B on steroids. I got a great big anode on it. Let's see here. I got one over here we can look at together. It's right here. This is one of them here. Let's see, I need a 250B. Do I got one laying right here? I do. They kind of look the same, but they're not. They kind of look the same, but they're not. Roughly the same footprint at the base. Pinouts are different. Of course, the body's different, and the anode's got a lot more metal to it. But this is an 8875, as you can clearly see here. 8875. This thing, um, you put 100 watts in it, and you get 10 watts out of it, this particular tube. So it's what we consider low output. Not bad yet, not completely shorted, but it's on its way to the grave. Okay, so this is where this is going to sit unless I state otherwise. That's a 1000 watt slug and peak average and then 5 watt slug in reverse. Okay, We're going to use the ICOM 7300 for the first portion of this. And right now as it stands, we're putting 80 watts in this thing on 160 meters. And what it's looking like now is it's a 10 to 1. Oh, i got to change that, that grain of wheat light bulb. It's okay, I've got them. Don't worry, I'll take care of that. So, hello, adio, one, two, one, two. 80 watts in. Hello, hello, about 900 out. Hello, a little bit generous on the watt meter on the front. Don't matter. Don't matter. All right, let's go to 80 meters. I'll give this thing do props where it's due. Its input's really low. So, once again, now we're on 80 meters. Over here. Come on. Over here, big camera. There we go. Focus. There we go. So, I got a lot of guys that get confused about this. This scale right here is power. Okay? That scale there is your standing wave. Right? So this is our compressor, standing wave. Alright. So now, with our 80 watts going in, is everybody seasick yet? I am. Check it out. One, two, one, two. Easy kilowatt. No problem at all. Kind of digging this little box. You gotta remember, this was built in an era, just like the SP220s and so on, when they were designed to have roughly about 200 watts of drive on sideband. So this thing will do legal limit, plus some. That's the reason for the ML2500 down here. Uh, it will do a little bit more than legal limit. I wouldn't run it there, but it will. Now, I got y'all's attention here for a minute. This is a time-on-time -time heat activated tube, so when you shut the amp off, turn it back on, so there's a 
couple minute warm up time of course. But then you have this switch here. And check how this works. It's called continuous duty. Hello. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. But when we click into continuous duty, it automatically kicks the fan to high when you go into transmit mode. Hello. Audio. Hello. One, two. Hello. So our general unit of, no of measure here. <coughs> not to say that this over here is an absolute unit of measure, because it is not is once again, a general unit of measure that's accurate within 10%, as most watt meters are. So we're close, these two there, let's see it's two, one for the stink, two, or two for the pink, one for the zinc, I mean it's two for the pink and two for the... Anyhow, these two units are fairly, uh, there, the, there we go, got it right, are fairly close. All right, let's go on up. Okay, so we bring ourselves to rest on 80 meters once again. Or, jeez almighty, 40 meters. Good lord. You guys are going to start to think I'm new at this or something. Okay. 40 meters. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, 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 hello. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Input tune's great. So now, let's come back down over here to this. Now, we're in 2x, okay? Let's go to 1x and not get electrocuted. Now we're in 1x. Face value is 1,000 watts on the right in peak power. Hello. Off to scale to the stop pick. And back up to 2x. Hello. About 1200 watts on 40 meters. It's just a little bit happier on 40 than it is the rest. Come on, these aren't like tuned by absolute freaking, you know, rocket scientists. These were put together on an assembly line, so therefore they're a little bit different, each one of the bands. But this one happens to be very happy on, well, 40. Hello. See once again this meter and that meter, pretty close. Hello. Hello. Adio. 1200 out, 1200 indicated, roughly. All right. Well, let's go on up to the magic band, I guess. It said scam likely on that one. <laughs> Voicemail. All right. So we're gonna go on up here, show what frequency we're on. Repeat this process over and over and over again. Well, at least we're over two thirds of the way. Okay, so we're on the magic band where it doesn't take a lot to get a long ways. Okay. And there's always something magical happening on the magic band. I get it. I'm an amateur radio operator too. I understand, I just don't enjoy talking. On the amateur bands, I just don't. It's not my thing. I'm just saying. Get it? No, I understand. Okay. Hello, 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 hello. Hello, are you? One, two, one, two, one, two. Hello. Okay. Now, once again, on 80 meters, we got a great input tune. I'm really zoomed in tight now. Let's back this up a little bit. So we're on 2x once again. Hello. Real happy. Hello. One, two. Hello. About 1300 watts, give or take. I'm sure we could tweak a little bit more out of it. We sat here and we played with the knobs. The whole point is to show that the thing is working and what condition the thing is when it leaves here. Because I don't want to own this. It's been sitting here forever. We bought this as an investment. So. Hello, one, two, one, two, hello. We're working. Okay, let's go on up to, shoot. Let's see, 21 megahertz is 15 meters. Let's go to 15 meters, away we go. Here we are on 15 meters, which 
I can't honestly remember the last time anybody bragged to me about a contact they made on 15 meters. It has been a while. It has been like longer than I can ever think of on any other thing. <laughs> Anyhow, 15 meters. Here's our 80 watts of drive. Remember that right hand meters on 2x. Hello, 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 hello. It's 80 in. Hello. 1200 out. All right. Let's go cusp on the land of funniness. Let's go to 10 meters. Okay. So here we are on the 10 meter position. Hello. Oh, well, we're off scale. All right, let's go 2x. So it's 2000 watt scale. Hello. Oh, God damn, we're off scale again. We'll go down to 5x. So now, let's see if I can do this. This little hash mark here, a thousand, next one's two thousand, and so on. Roa, roa, twenty five hundred watts. What? What am I doing? Oh, I know what I'm doing wrong. Son of a gun. Yes, I'm on the twenty nine fifty up here. I'm cheating. I got the little bench two pill, and I'm driving it with two hundred whole watts. I know, I'm a cheater. So let's look in here again. Hello, 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 hello. That's all I'm putting in it for drive. Hello, 24, 2500 watts pretty easily. Now, <clears throat> same thing carries over for 10 meters and all the other bands. So it's not really worth going over. This thing came in here and it was busted big time. I spent a lot of time working back here in this corner. And what I mean back here in this corner, if you guys could really see how far away my finger is, you guys, oh my god, he's almost touching the tubes. Here, watch, check it out. Oh, oh god, I'm going to die. There's like a foot <laughs> and a half between my finger and the friggin' actual amp. Camera doesn't show depth, by the way, you guys. This whole corner back here, um, both the coax connectors were slopped out like Tijuana and hookers, okay? They were pretty rough. Um, actually, the output coax connector was cracked and broken. It was shorting. So I went ahead and I replaced that with good Teflon, silver plated um, coax connectors, redid the wires and rebuilt the power bridge because it was a mess. Now, the front of the amp, the switches hadn't been used in so long, they were all frozen. So I took the whole board out, um, I soaked it in some cleaner after removing the Bakelite switches, and then I lubricated everything with a, uh, like I think it was Mother's Miracle Red, super light oil, okay, just a little bit. And then the detents that make these switches work. Man, what is up with the scam calls today? Make the detents work. I made sure those were oil free and then I used uh, graphite. Just a small amount of powdered graphite. The reason you do that is because you don't want the switches to collect dust. <coughs> Excuse me. And these old switches to be really careful what you use as a lubricant and what you use to clean them. All the meter ranges work, everything is fully restored. Then I had the transmit light was out, so then I took that apart and I repaired that as well. Other than that, um, pretty scooch and straightforward. Um, I went and I uh, varnished the contacts on the input and output relay in the back, and that's it. Clean the fan. So. If this thing was a screaming example of Dentron, okay, and there was such a thing as a 10 in the land of Dentron, this thing with its rare tubes in it is actually pretty scooch and cool. Those 8875 tubes that are in this thing are very hard to get a hold of, but they are out there. Um, we ended up having to buy a replacement tube one of the two tubes that was in this thing was completely dead. It did zero. It wasn't shorted, it just didn't put out any power. So I'll send it along too. I don't know what for, but I don't need it here. 
So they'll be very clearly marked. They're going to come in their own separate packages. This thing is going to come in its own separate package as well um, in a wood crate. And believe you me, that little granite wheat light bulb will be replaced before it leaves here. Fixed. Fixed. So um, on a scale of 1 to 10, it's about an 8.5 to a 9. Um, there's some tiny little scratches up here on the face. Over here in a corner, down here in a corner, and there's a couple of chips around the outside that take from that. But other than that, this thing is a very clean MLA 2500. Um, it's got all the upgrades in it that I can do to it. Now, now you guys know that Ameritron and Dentron used to be, they, they kind of, they're kind of the same pig in a poke, right? And I don't know, I've heard four or five different stories. If, if somebody from Ameritron out there or used to work for Ameritron, <clears throat> or Dentron wants to call me and tell me the story. I'd really appreciate it. But from what I understand, there was a split in the family and one half went off and did Dentron and the other half kept doing Ameritron. I don't know how much truth there is to that. <clears throat> There's a lot of similarities between the two. Board designs are kind of close. You can tell the Transformers um, and the older Ameritrons kind of came from the same source as the Dentrons. Um, the internal layout and a lot of the internal parts are... I don't want to step on my, my tongue here or shove my foot in my own ass, but they kind of could be interchangeable in certain situations. So uh, a lot of the same schools of thought between the two. And you guys know that the Ameritron design, basically most of the Ameritron amps that are out there available for purchase today have not changed in a long time. There's been some small changes. Um, as far as the CW circuits are concerned, uh, the full wave cut-ins, the some of the other mods, those things, those are all new engineering designs. But the basic ball flesh and bones of the situation, the transformer, the power supply, the metering circuits, the sockets, the tubes, all of that has stayed relatively the same now for decades. Which is good. It's reliable. It is what it is. Guys, I appreciate everybody tuning in on this Black Friday, the day after Thanksgiving. And I want to say that we're going to put this thing up for sale for 1200 bucks. Black Friday special. Dentron 2500. First one to call me with the cash gets the amplificator. All band, all mode, 100% ready to go. Both tubes obviously tested at full output. In very good condition, no dents. Um, you could throw this thing on and run it for the end of time. The hardest thing this box will ever be put through is when I sat here and drove it as hard as I did with the 200 watts. Most amateur pieces of equipment today only put out about 100, 125 watts worth of power, which this thing will sit here and eat and make 12 to 1300 watts of power all day long, 24 seven for the rest of its known life, which I guarantee will be longer than you are alive. Probably longer than I'm around as well. By the way, the 8875 tube is still made, being made in China, but of course it's got an FU number. Don't ask me what the FU number is about. I've talked to several people, engineers in China, and I said, can you please explain to me why every tube that comes to the United States got an FU in front of it? And they're like, why oh, do we don't know? <laughs> I'm just saying, it is what it is. Okay, 1200, give me a call and we'll make it come your direction immediately. Well, no, not immediately. It is that time of year. The other thing is we're going to start shutting down shipping. Um, I shipped one out of here two weeks ago, and it got fabuddled. The brown shipbox kickers lived up to their name, and I think we're going to start holding up on shipping. But if we crate this, which is my preferred method of sending these old antique boxes around the country, I think we'll have a prayer of getting it there with no damage. So... First person to give me a ring gets the Black Friday special. So, that note, gentlemen, I gotta run. I got a bunch of other things I need to take care of today. And I'm working the other job and it's snowing outside, so I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get busy here in a minute. Bump, bump. From the biggest duck in Idaho, and I thank everybody for tuning in, checking this out, and following along. Big thanks to X Access Power, Siglent, Berg, Coaxial Dynamics, and last but should be first, and always is first in my mind, thanks to every single one of you guys. I'll see ya.